Bell Schools Coordinator for Roboses in upstate New York, and I am joined here with Nicole Lee, <laughs> um, and I'm the co-founder of Elementary, the platform to write and code interactive stories using professional illustrations and sounds. So what we wanted to talk about today was about a digit escape room that we were uh, able to put it together last year. The idea was that the participants could come in and learn about digital citizenship by going through all of these different stations. And what the, the participants that do this, this escape room have to do is go through all of these different carnival events but while they're doing that, they're learning about and they're thinking about digital citizenship. They're using the ISTE standards um, and they're looking at how they can be global impactors as they're going through the program. Basically, in order so to create an escape room, the key mechanisms would be we need to find, first of all, different items within the story. And then based upon these items, they'll give us clues that we can later on solve the puzzle. So the basic coding mechanism would be we would need to use things like variables to store information. In this case, it'd be the code. And then we would compare it to the actual value. So, so we're going to take a look at behind the scenes of this dig sit escape room. And to do that, we need to remix this story. So it makes a copy of it so that we can see how the coding actually works. So when we were storyboarding it out, we wrote out all of the text. We figured out what type of characters we wanted, the background images. And in order to get the code, we would need to code it on the backside like so. So here's an example of what the code would look like on page two. This one is a little bit more complex, but you'll see that there's blocks and we connect them together and we use it to basically uh, do all the interactions, um, play the voiceovers, play the sound effects, the music, and even do the navigation. So depending upon what you choose, for instance, you might go to different pages, like in this case right here, you can choose to turn left, or you can choose to turn right. And depending upon your choice, you'll be navigated to different pages. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Michael Dresick. I'm a district tech integrator at Lakeshore CSD uh, in Angola, New York, outside of Buffalo. And um, di digital citizenship has been, a, I guess, a, a goal of our district to always uh, do better in this department. We know that there's always work to do. And, um, you know, we, we took this uh, partnership with the Digital Citizenship Institute uh, a few years back where we put on a DigiSit Summit right here at Lakeshore across the district. And, um, you know, one of the things that the students were in charge of running that day was the DigiSit Carnival. Uh, for teachers. So, you know, we were inspired by your idea at NiceGate, the conference uh, the, a year earlier, and we thought, how cool would that be if we had some students take the lead on that? Uh, I guess to transition that online and to bring it into an escape room type format where, you know, and made it more accessible for everybody, I guess, um, to play and learn in that format. So my yeah, role, I guess, in, in helping create was to do some of the voiceovers for some of the uh, male characters and um, I had my son uh, at the time, he was seven. I had him do some voiceovers for uh, the, the boy character. So it was, it was kind of fun to, to get him involved as well. As a parent, um, it's having those conversations at home um, because, you know, I don't want to just rely on the school to do it all. I know a lot of schools are doing great work in digital citizenship, but I think as a, as a parent, it's important to have those conversations as well. You know, we see the TikTok challenges happening right now and you see stories on the news and um, as students get phones in their hands at younger ages, it's like, how do we, I don't know, you know, be proactive about making sure that we're having the important conversations. And I think, you know, a game like this, like an escape room like this, kids are into games. They want to have fun. They can play it and almost not even realize that they're learning. And then, you know, what kind of conversations can you have afterwards about that? You know, not everything you see on the internet is true. Uh, yeah, and it's really um, a neat platform to actually build the escape room on because Nicole actually, uh, right before you came on, Mike, um, she brought us into the escape room and then with just a click of a button, that remix button, she was in the back end and could actually recreate it. So you could have the students go through the escape room and then build their own um, with just a, you know, that one little click, which is really kind of a cool way to um, get the students to really think beyond the escape room. Most important is that when you create on elementary, you publish, which means you leave your digital footprint. And that brings up so many possibilities of conversations, not just of 
what is the what is your digital footprint or what is your online presence? But how can our online presence shape our identities? How do our identities shape our online presence? Do they have to match? Do they not need to match? Uh, what's a good comment? How do I comment in a, an effective way? Um, how do I be respectful while giving comments? These are all things that are embedded uh, within digital storytelling. And it doesn't have to be just telling students digital citizenship is this, listen to me talk about this, but we have to apply it in our daily lives and in our daily classrooms. Thank you both for, uh, for being a part of this panel and for sharing your expertise in the world of digital citizenship and in the world of coding. And if you haven't checked out Elementary, it's a fabulous uh, website to use for digital storytelling uh, with a combination with computer science. The escape room activity is so intellectually challenging for students. It gives them a chance to explore different platforms. It was very fun and challenging. I thought it was fun. It was fun. A good digital citizen is someone who does not bully fine. is safe online. To not be like mean to others, to not be disrespectful. It also plays into listening, problem solving. If I see anyone bullying or not being a good citizen, I will tell them to stop. Be more alert. Don't do everything that the internet tells you. Um, kiddos encouraging kindness because it shows that we are trying to um, encourage kindness. Good.